Hello and welcome to this introductory video on logic gates. In this video we're going to look at some of the key types of logic gates and how they function. But before we get on to that, I want to talk briefly about the difference between analog and digital. Logic gates are examples of digital processing and require digital signals to do so. But what do we mean by digital and how does it differ from analog? Well, first of all, let's illustrate by drawing a very simple circuit. Let's suppose that I have uh, a circuit with just two components in it. It's got a resistor and it's also got a thermistor, a temperature dependent resistor. So there's the symbol for a thermistor there. And I'll complete the circuit like so. What we'll find is that as temperature changes, temperature goes up or goes down, the voltage that we measure across this thermistor is going to change as the resistance changes. Now this is just a silly example, but what we can imagine is as the temperature goes up and down, we'll see the voltage that we're measuring across that thermistor go up and down also. This is an example of an analog quantity. We have a continuous variable in voltage. The voltage can change between high, medium and low levels, and it can vary anywhere between uh, on, that, on that scale of voltage there. And that's measured over time. The opposite situation is a digital circuit. Digital circuits have two discrete values, and they're either often called zero or one, high or low, true or false, but they all mean the same thing. What we'll find in a digital circuit is rather than a continuous, or dis, uh, a continuous variable that's going up and down, we'll have only two logic states permitted. For the purposes of this example, I'll call them zero and one. But what we'll find is that we see our signal appear in the form of pulses, either ones or zeros and we don't get anything in between. Logic gates are components that can process these ones and zeros in order to produce outputs, depending on the combination of inputs. Let's have a look at some of the basic types of logic gates and how they function. The first example of a logic gate is an AND gate. Here's the symbol for an AND gate on the left-hand side. And what you can see that in this particular example, my AND gate has two inputs, usually a letter A, B, if it was a three input gate, C, and so on and so forth. And we have the output here, which is generally given the letter Q. To try and understand how the logic gate works, we represent the logic gate's function in a truth table. This is an example of a truth table on the right-hand side. And what you can see is that we have every possible combination of input and output. Remember that we are only allowed two logic states, either high or low, one or zero. So the four possible combinations are zero and zero on A and B, zero and one, one and zero, or one and one. The way that an AND gate works, well, the clue is in the name. For there to be an output, Q, we have to have an input from A and B. So what we see on the right hand side here in our truth table is that the only instance where we'll get a value uh, of 1 for Q is when A and B are 1. All of the other possible combinations will give us 0. Here's another example of a logic gate. This logic gate is called an OR gate. And very simply, again the clue being in the name, an input on A or B of 1 will give us an output of 1. And so what we find is that with an OR gate, we get an output of 1 for A or B, or we also get an output of 1 if both inputs are high as well. The next type of gate is called a NAND gate. The NAND gate you'll see is very similar to the AND gate, it's the same symbol. 
but it has this small dot on the end which represents an inversion or an inverter. Very basically, seeing an inverter on the end of a logic gate tells us that the logic gate behaves in the opposite way to that which the logic gate would behave if it didn't have the inverter. And so what we're going to see here is exactly the opposite behaviour for an AND gate. An AND gate, we know from our first example, gave us only one when both A and B were one. The rest were zero. And so a NAND gate behaves in completely the opposite way. We'll get a zero when both inputs are one, and we'll get ones on the output Q for any other value, or combination rather. We can see the same in the NOR gate. The NOR gate is the inverted output of an OR gate. Remembering the OR gate gave us one when either A or B or both were one. Here, the NOR gate will give us the opposite behavior of the OR gate. And so we'll see a result that looks like this. The last example is an XOR gate. This is short for exclusive OR. I'll make a note of that by the side here. Exclusive OR. Exclusive OR means exclusively one or the other, but not both. If you remember that in, an, in, a, in a normal OR gate, we would get a, a response of one from Q if A or B or both were 1, so we'd get 1, 1, and 1, but we'd get 0 when A and B are both 0. An exclusive OR gate requires exclusively 1 or the other, but not both, to be 1 in order to get an output of 1. And so our result looks something like this. In our next video, we're going to look at how we can combine logic gates together to make more complicated combination logic circuits. But for now, I hope this video has been useful as an introduction to the different types of logic gates and how we can represent their function using truth tables.